Number eight, his favorite number two. How do you feel when you think about the little boy that put that on for the first time? Joy, that's joy. It's very emotional with what he's been to. We was just so small. Just reflecting on my journey, it was definitely a difficult one. I just remember playing in the park, just me with the ball. I wanted to be a professional. I was in control, it was me and the ball. don't know me, you know, very quiet state of myself. It's a trademark of who he is and what he was holding inside, but beyond that. On the field. Taking on everyone. Fierce determination. You get it! Score! What I see with Tejon is a mentality to get to the top. What a strike from Tejon Buchanan! There's always adversity that he's had to face. It wasn't easy. A lot of players will probably quit. Once you know his past, it was easy to see. That's where the determination comes from. I remember it like it was yesterday. When you lose somebody at a young age, do you carry that with you? Yeah, obviously it was a very dark time for, for my whole family. It's gonna be there for the rest of his life. I had to just keep going. When you know the story, you understand the depth of what's behind and beyond the quiet. Tejon Buchanan, the boy from Brampton. Brampton, 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 Brampton. It's a calm morning in the historic fairy tale city of Bruges, Belgium. But beyond these narrow streets and across these picturesque bridges, you can hear Roar. Rouge is home to the Belgian Pro League champions, Club Bruges. And listening intently to the raucous Rouge supporters is a quiet kid from Brenton who is authoring his own fairy tale. As a kid, I dreamed of playing in Europe, but now that it's, it's actually here and I'm, I'm here living, yeah, it's, it's surreal. What's it been like you got to Bruges for the first time and, and hearing the fans? It was something I've never experienced before in my life. It was amazing. You can and got to and... As a club, we've seen the challenge. What struck us was that uh, he was making a lot of progress on, uh, on short notice. On a given day, I will go 1v1 over and over and over again. He knows really well what he wants. It's something I've been working towards all my life. Who got you into the sport of football? So when I was young, I got put into uh, it was a recreational house league. You know, six, seven years old. My dad put me into it. I think he's seen something in Tejon. My dad got in a little soccer ball that just kind of like play around with that. So I think he, he knew that, you know, soccer was going to be a sport. I mean, we just see, we've seen the, the potential in him. And we've seen that he was doing good. His dad always said, Phil, you should see this guy running up and down in the field and he's scoring goals and he's taking the ball off for everybody. You got to come see him. You got to come see him. Practice would be over and we would all just stay on the field and we would just kick the ball around. As a kid, you're just, you know, having fun in the moment, enjoying life. Yeah, those definitely always special memories, you know, you always keep. But those memories would be all they could hold on to. After the unexpected passing of Tejon's father sent shockwaves through the family and had a profound effect on Tejon. After my father passed, he quit soccer. We didn't want him to get back into sports right away because that was our thing. It was the father-son time. All like my dad's world, you know? He was there, motivated us. And you're that age, what was you, six, I think? It's hard to understand. It was hard for them to cope 
everyone stepped in and, and helped. I could not walk away from those boys. We had to make sure like we were there for him, there for each other. It wasn't really just me, you know, it's a whole family thing. I mean, we wouldn't make it, we wouldn't make it. We would make it. A lot of people in my family say he probably doesn't remember much, but for sure I remember my father. Deeply pained from the loss of his father, a retreat to Jamaica and the warm embrace of family would help him reconnect to the sport he loved. They used to play soccer behind the school. He was behind that school playing soccer with my cousin every day. We got back and it was like a light bulb lit up. Everything just took off from there. The first time I saw him play, Tejon was different. Even at that age, despite the fact that he's as quiet as he is, on the field, he'll run through a brick wall. Fiercely competitive. Every single practice, we're just stopping him because he won't stop himself. We started on the B team until he was 14. I was going to be the best. There are those that fail because of a loss and those that are motivated by a loss. Tejon set terms, created short-term goals, and just kept taking them off. I always told them that if they work hard, anything is possible. Yeah, I felt that me becoming a professional would make my dad proud. But he was not on the radar for anybody. And Coach Chris unintentionally gave Tejon another obstacle by accepting a job in the U.S. I'd explain to the kids that, like them, I was doing everything I could to, to grow my dreams. This was my chance. And then I joked about them coming to visit any time they wanted. But for him, it was different. Tejan showed up at our house and said, I'm coming with you guys to Colorado. I said, Tejan, you can't come with us to another country. There are laws. He would not take no for an answer. You know, I felt I wasn't going to get my opportunity. I want to be the best player and, po and person I could possibly be, and wherever that takes me, it takes me. It was hard for me as a mom to let my 16-year-old go to a family I really didn't even know. But I'm not going to stifle my child when I know that there's a dream there. We had to go through the courts, and his mom had to sign over custody. We all believed in him all the way. At first, things weren't easy for Tejon in the U.S. Although he could train with high-level clubs, strict international player rules limited his ability to play in competitions. A lot of hard nights, you know, the hard days, missing his family, home here, and he didn't let it bother him. There's no plan B. If I'm thinking about plan B, I'm not going to achieve plan A. It was two years of tryout after tryout, and slowly, Tejon's talent broke through. And after completing his academic requirements came his opportunity, a scholarship to Syracuse University. The man of the night, that's Mr. Tejon Buchanan. People started taking me more seriously as a player. Life on the pitch became a little less quiet. Three more goals for Tejon Buchanan. Welcome to the 2019 Major League Soccer Super Draft. The pride of Brampton, Tejon Buchanan. Goes into the draft in his sophomore year, goes number nine to New England. It's, it's overwhelming and it's fantastic. He's gonna prove all of those other teams wrong. I saw the potential in Tejon and I learned about his past. That's when you kind of put two and two together and like, yeah, okay. I think Tejon needs somebody to believe in him. Hearing that this coaching staff believes in you, you want to prove them right. To the middle, Buchanan scores, ties the game, and it's getting better and better for the New England Revolution. He was one of very few Canadians in the MLS that were starting. And a good header from Buchanan. Tejon Buchanan, the boy from Brampton. 
That's absolutely brilliant from Dijon Buchanan. These are the kind of players that you buy tickets for. These are the kind of players that you turn on your TV for. There's a reason why there's interest around the globe in that young man. There's so much more he wants to accomplish. The sky's the limit. Did it ever feel like you might not get that chance with Canada? Yes. Yes, yes it did. When that U20 roster came out for the World Cup to see that I wasn't selected, yeah, that one hurt a lot. Yeah, maybe I'm never gonna play for Canada. But that all changed in June 2021. Once he got the, the initial call up, it was a huge deal for him. And that's when I really had to show that I belong here. With Tejon, every environment he reaches, he has the potential to reach that ceiling and he's shown that and he's grown with this Canadian team. Dejan Buchanan! He's one of the biggest stars Canada has and he's a big part of helping Team Canada get to the World Cup. We were very fortunate. We were right there. Every time I watch it, it brings a tear to my eye. It's almost a fairy tale. A generation of young kids are gonna be watching that goal, that flip, and they're gonna be saying, I wanna be Tejon Buchanan. Quiet as he is, on the field, it was always a little bit different. To see where he started, it is a fairy tale. Signing for Club Rouge didn't hit me till I literally got here and that I was playing for the biggest club in Belgium, you know, a Champions League club. When I think about the World Cup, I'm ready to show what I could do on the biggest stage in the world. And those defenders that are going to be waiting for you when you get to Qatar, what, what, what do you want them to know? <laughs> they don't need to know anything. It's just it's me and the ball. To get to the level that he's at right now, he did it on his own. Definitely uh, something amazing to see. Could not be happier for him. I would love if his dad could ever see just once where he is today. Never just been you and the ball. For sure, man. There's a lot of people that play such a big part, and I play for them, I play for my dad. Without my family, I wouldn't be where I am. That carries with me.